All right, friends and neighbors, I thought I would do a couple of builds for you with virtual machines, some networking packages, and then maybe we'll get started on some SSH. So I'm going to do this and record this as I go, and I'll only edit it for time. Okay, so, uh, so what you see is what I actually did. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, create a VM. And I'm going to do that from CentOS. Now, you can see on my desktop here, I have CentOS 7. So I'm going to go out to the CentOS website and bring down CentOS 8. So we'll just go CentOS Linux, x86 architecture, and we're going to do 8. And then I'll just grab one from NYU. We'll just go with the smaller image. You can see it's a 723 meg. We can see by our icon this might take a little while so I am going to pause the video here and then I'll start back up again when I do the install. Okay it looks like our progress is completed here and on the desktop we can see that CentOS 8 has joined CentOS 7. All right so I'm working with 15.5 15, 15, Pro as you can see and I've got this nice big icon here I'm just going to create a virtual machine. We'll do typical for right now. We're not going to do anything special. Now, where's the installer disk, the ISO? Well, we'll just browse to that, and it's right here. Okay, and we'll go next. Now, a lot of this is just click-through, right? So we know that this is a Linux VM. It's a 64-bit, right? So you can sort of choose here. I'm doing CentOS 8, 64-bit. We'll click through and that'll suffice because all of my other VMs, you can see I've got this library over here and all the other VMs are CentOS 7 so it'll be pretty clear what this one is. Um, and we'll worry about other names later when we start dealing with some clones. So that's a fine place to store it. Uh, now another, another thing that we sometimes do with uh, the VMs is that for performance reasons or for size reasons, limitations, things like that, you can split the disk or split the the uh, virtual disk into multiple files. That's your VMDK file, um, or go with single. I like singles. I'm going to go with that for right now. And so here is the base configuration. It's just got one gig of memory for me, and we can see that we got network address translation for our adapter, which is the standard. I am going to go ahead and customize this. Now this brings up the list of virtual hardware. I'm just going to double this. Do it this way I guess. Oops. Like that. Alright, we'll just double it. Now I could also uh, change what I want for my networking and things like that but for right now. Uh, that'll be fine. I could also add adapters here. So sometimes when we build VMs we want to have more than one adapter if you're building a router or something like that for a virtualized environment. But I think we'll go with this for right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and finish the VM. And we can see that it's popped up right here. Uh, and at this point, I could still go ahead and edit the settings. I would get a, a window much like the one that I got before. Um, let's see. This is important to us because this is where the ISO is going to be. And so this is just like using a CD or a DVD to install your operating system and we want it to connect the power on. Again, you can see that most of this stuff is on by default. And if I power this virtual machine on right now, we can see that um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and live in the virtual machine and I'm going to go ahead and install the operating system. Now one of the things you may have noticed is that when I'm moving my mouse around, I've got you know my handy dandy finger pointer here. But if I click in the VM, it disappears. And that's because the VM now has focus. And Control Alt will give me my pointer back so I can go back to Windows and do my thing here. But clicking in here allows me to navigate. Now my keyboard is captured by the VM. And so I am going to install CentOS 8. And so while it goes through the first steps here, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, but I will come back to it when I hit a couple things that I think are really important in the install. Alright, so let's go through some of the basic steps on installation. 
I'm going to choose the English language and, and the United States. Now here are a couple of other windows that are really important. The installation direction is going to go to my virtual disk. The installation source, well we have the ISO, so we're going to get the operating system. And the software selection, I'm not actually going to worry about that right now. If we were going to do a server of some kind, we, we might want to select packages or things like that that we're going to install. I'm not going to do that now. But one of the other things that's really, really helpful is our network. And so we want to make sure that when we power up this VM that it's actually, uh, our, our network is actually enabled. And you can see that I got a 192.168 address. This is the network address translation network governed by the hypervisor. It's not on my network locally. And the last thing that we want to do is a root password. Now I'm going to do something kind of simple here. There we go. Let's see if we can get it to match. All right. So that way I have a, a password set up, and we're going to see where we're going to need that uh, later on. Okay, I'm not going to bother with uh, user creation, software selection. Again, this is where I would pick this. Now I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to do a minimal install. And that's going to force me to do some installations from the repositories later on. And that will force us to use some of our tools. And so you'll see why I do that here in a minute. All right. So we're ready to begin installation. And I may pause the video here as it does the, does the install. All right. Our install has completed. And you can see that we've gotten to the reboot screen. So now that we've done that, make sure that I'm recording OK. We'll go ahead and reboot the system. There we are. And we're going to go ahead and boot CentOS 8.4. So the only user that's on this system right now is root. There we are. Now I can do all kinds of commands from here, right? I can see where I am. There's root's home directory and things like that. But that's not really what I'm after in this particular part of the video. This is a minimal install. And so it doesn't have a whole lot built into the system. So I wanted to force us to use some of the tools that we're going to need later on this semester. So one of the basic things that we want to do is be able to see the IP address, which we can with IPA. But there are a lot of other commands that are associated with the network that we sometimes want to be able to use. One of those is if config. We all have tools that we're used to using or that we're comfortable with. Uh, one of the packages that I like is Net Tools, and we are on CentOS. So the package manager that I'm going to use is yum. And so we're going to do a yum install net tools all right so it's gone out and found this particular package and then i'm going to just say yes and then all right so now theoretically i should have some of the commands or some of the tools jeez so yum happened to know this one but what if you go to install something and yum or apt or you know your rpm repos are not updated. What do you do then? Well, one of the things that we have to realize is that when you're going to install software and I just say something like yum install, you know, something like this here, yum install net tools, what yum or the yellow dog update modified is doing is checking its internal database to see if it knows and then if it doesn't know that we can check online databases for the repo or the software that we're that we're after there's also a strategy associated with how you do the upgrades now we are going to create some clones here and so i could fully upgrade and update this particular vm and then create my clones from an updated version this is in pretty good shape right now for what I want to do. We're going to, we're going to install some additional software later on. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and do my, my clone. So how do we do a clone? 
one of the first things that we have to realize is that when we want to create a clone, we have to shut down the virtual machine that we're uh, using because the files are active. That's different than a snapshot. A snapshot is an instance in time, what a particular VM is doing, sort of a, um, a configuration, a point, but a clone is something different, and so we actually have to shut down the VM. So I'm going to do that right now, focus on the right place. Now you can shut it down from the VM controls, but I'm going to use an ancient command. There we go. All right, thank you. Now, when we want to create the clone, right, I'm going to select the VM that I want, and I could grab it on the tabs here. And we're going to go to VM, Manage, and then I'm just going to go ahead and clone this particular VM. Now, cloning actually happens very, very fast. And we'll do that. Now, a, a link clone versus a full clone. Well, you can see the difference here in the text, and there's a difference in the size on the hard drive as well. They're both actually fairly fast processes, but there's a, the difference between them is that a link clone is exactly what it sounds like. It's tied back to the original VM. I am going to go ahead and create a full clone. And I'm going to call this my CentOS 8 server. Oh my goodness, that was so fast. Okay, we're all done. So we got a clone now, and you can see we popped up here. And I'm going to clone this again. And that looks good, right? We're going to do a full clone again. And this time, we're going to make this one like the one I made it for CentOS 7 as a client. There we go. And that part was done in real time for you. So now we've got these two guys here. And I'm going to just clean up my tabs just a little bit here. We don't need all of these. There we go. And to power on the virtual machines, we're going to do both of these. Now the configuration of the, of the two clones is going to be the exact same as the VM from which they are sourced. There we go. They both, both appear to be running. We're going to let them come up for a sec. Now it's worth noting at this point that I am the root user. So I can do just about anything that I want on this particular system. But when you're on a system where you're either a user that's been created or you're in the lab and you're a student, you run into a problem where you don't have the rights or privileges to do an install. So let's let's address that right now. So right now I'm going to add a user to the system. Add user Bruce and maybe give myself a home directory. Like so. Okay, and if we take a look at home, we should see that we've got a home directory in there. So we've created this user. We haven't given this user a password now, so let's do that. Spelling counts. And whoops, um, <laughs> got a little crazy there. Let's try that again. And we'll make it, oh, I don't know. So we're going to log out and log back in as this new user. Like that. And we'll see where we are. We're in our home directory, so that's good. Now the basic problem with what we have is we're not a root user anymore. We're just a regular user on the system, but we want to install something. And in this case, we want to install OpenSSH. So let's see what happens when I try that. says this command has to be run with super user privileges. Okay, 
So what do we need to do? We need to do a sudo yum install open SSH. Oops. Oh, come on. And we can see uh, that I'm not, I don't have the ability to install things. So, so now I'm going to log in as root. Okay, so now I'm actually SU'd as root. So I'm a different person right now as far as the system is concerned. So now I'm going to go ahead and install OpenSSH, but because I want this box to be my server, uh, I'm going to install that version of the software. Well, we can see that it's already installed on this system, but that's how you would do uh, do the install. Now here's the here's something worth mentioning, right? So I did an su command to shift my privileges over to root because I wasn't in the sudoers uh, list or group. So let's take a look at something real quick here. When we want to install something. A lot of times when we install something on a system, we don't have the privileges to do it. So sudo is the command that would allow me to tell the system, look, it's okay if I do this. But I have to be in the sudoers list or the sudoers list. And that is the super users, those that would be able to install stuff on the system. If I'm not, which is the case with the user that I created, well, I run into that permissions problem. And so I had to change, temporarily change my permissions by doing an SU to root. So there's a bunch of things that go together there. There's SU itself, there's sudo, which allows me to run the command and then issue a password if I have super user privileges. And then there's the list of folks that have the ability to do that called the sudoers. Okay, well that does it for our OpenSSH server, if we take a look at our client, there's a good chance that we've got uh, SSH as a client running here as well. All right, looks like it's already installed, so we're probably, theoretically, ready to go. So it looks like SSH is there, and of course, we know that SSH is here. Now the big difference here is that we want one side to be the server and we want one side to be the client. The client doesn't actually have to do anything except, except the key from the server. But on the server side, of course, we need to generate keys and we need to configure the server for SSH connections, which is something we'll do in the, another video. All right, we'll get after those configurations next time. But until then, keep those secure packets coming, and may they always reach those destinations.